Oh, anyway, our survival story takes on now, in fact. Well, uh, we are still celebrating the Ghana Mass, uh, 63 years on. However, a lot has happened. A lot gone under the bridge. Those sure. who have fought, those who have tried hard to put this country in shape. However, there's some individuals or some persons that have suffered out of this struggle for these persons who have who have toiled hard, you know, to put Ghana where they are. Now, we'll be talking to Madame Esther Odate Wellington. That name rings a bell? Mm -hmm. It surely does. Does June Ford ring a bell? It surely does. However, yes. we have a backstory. Let's watch it over back shortly. My name is Esther Odate Wellington, and my father is Major General Neville Alexander Odati Wellington, who used to be the commander of Ghana Army. There was a mutiny uh, by a group of men uh, in the military, and uh, my father at the time, on 4th June 1979, uh, was the army commander. And in a bid to quell this insurrection, he was killed at Numa police station. That morning, I had heard my father's voice on the radio um, announcing that the, the, the um, mutiny had been quelled. Good morning, fellow countrymen. I have come to the studio to confirm that the uprising which took place during the early hours of this morning has been curled. I am hereby ordering all officers and men of the Ghana Armed Forces to return to their respective units. I can't remember what happened later, but I didn't hear any more, and um, I think I'm not sure whether it was a day or two after. My mom came to see me. I was in boarding school at the time in the middle of my exam, so she came to see whether everything was fine with me. And uh, at the, that point, she didn't know where my father was. Then I'm sure, well, we all thought that he might have been holed up somewhere with his colleagues, strategizing. Yeah, but then uh, when she came to see me, I knew then that uh, the rebellion had succeeded somewhat. Um, then I can't remember how many days after. Uh, a colleague of my father's came and then he broke the uh, bad news to me. Of course, I was horrified because uh, knowing my father as he was very dynamic, very strong, um, always in total command of situations, I expected him to come through. So when he, I, I was shocked at first and then it began to sink in. And at my last uh, 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 meeting with my dad, yeah, he was having uh, his supper and no, maybe lunch even. I can't remember anyhow. He was having his meal and he was, I can see it uh, as if it was yesterday in my mind's eye, as if it happened yesterday. And he was sitting at the head of the table as he did. And I was by him and I brought out this form for my sixth form and then we started chatting about what we'll do what i would do teacher and he said oh i would like you his grandma his mother uh, who died in his infancy was a teacher and he said oh i'd like you to go to cape coast university and uh, take up teaching just like your grandmother whether <laughs> I agree with him or not, it's another matter, but <laughs> that's what he wanted me to do. He, said, he thought I had the intellect and ability to be able to do that. <sighs> wow. 
Wow, welcome back. And I'm very sure you've picked up a lot on that very short story we've shared for you. Let me say good morning to Mr. and Mrs. Edmund Foley watching all the way from Gambia as well and uh, giving kudos to this particular segment we're about to discuss with um, our guest in the studio. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. We are honored to have you. Oh, that's very kind of you. <laughs> I can, uh, well, okay, Mifa. I'm question. My, I'm, I'm curious. Yes. I, I felt like something pushed you up in the couch when you heard your father's voice again. Even I was surprised at my reaction. Yeah. Right. 40 years after the fact, if my father had walked through the door, it would have seemed normal to me. Mm. So I don't know why, because I, I have heard this uh, recording many times, oh, yeah. but I, I suppose it's different every time. And this morning, I don't know, but I just had to sit up to attention or something erect. Yeah, yeah. Let's get a sense of happenings prior to June 4th with your father coming in and out of the house. Um, did you ever expect anything to happen? Did you see him and team planning anything? Um, what, what was his uh, demeanor? I just want to understand happenings just before um, June 4th. I was not at home. I was in boarding school. Mm. So if there'd been anything in the immediate few days prior, I wouldn't have known. But from what I gather, there wasn't. There had been an attempt at an insurrection on the 15th of May, okay. prior to 4th of June, right. which had been quelled. And my father, after that, as uh, army commander, I know, had gone around the units talking to the officers and men. Um, then also there was a clear timetable for return to civilian rule. And that was in the offing. So that was what my father and his colleagues were working towards. Mm -hmm. Therefore, 4th of June, I think, came as a nasty surprise because it upset the apple cart. So, yeah. Well, between 13th uh, May mm -hmm. and 4th of June, yes. uh, at the time where Flight uh, Rollins was, was being, you know, shall I say, questions about his attempt mm. towards a, a stage a, a coup d'etat, mm. which he turned everything around mm. and said that it was a then government that rather was uh, engaging in, you know, uh, corruption mm. and all of that. Was your father not... Uh, quite alarmed that anything can happen, though he was in, though he was in prison, uh, Rollins was taken back to prison. Was he not alarmed that anything and anything at all can happen? I can't answer for yeah. my father. I don't know what he was thinking, but what happened on 4th of June in the aftermath was without precedent. At no time in the history of this country had men frog marched their generals right. and tied them to the stake and shot them. At no point in the history of this country did men strip women and open their legs and cane them in between their legs. Right. At no point in the history of this country had so-called junior officers uh, made up a concoction of chili powder and gunpowder hmm. and douched women and destroyed their uterus. What happened? Let me ask you, it's how do you feel about, do you feel about former president, your personal feelings? About whom? Uh, former president, Derrida Rawlings. I have no feelings towards Mr. Rawlings. Not at all. Yeah. Well, um, where were you on June 4th? I was, and what were you doing? I was in the middle of my O-levels wow. at Achimoto School. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I was in the boarding Please, house. Please, can I praise Achimota again? Yes. <laughs> For producing such um, eloquent I'm an and outstanding well. yeah, have to do that. Yes, please. Baby Akora. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you've just had an Akora new tour yes, on please. the program, also, so it's our day today. Yes, it's our day today. <laughs> Fantastic. So, you were you were you in any way affected? You know, um, your, your psyche, your, your uh, mental stability with regards to what was happening, your father's involvement, and everything. Well, that morning, um, 
just like everyone else. We, I think we had an old, those box radios. And I heard my father's voice, so, <laughs> so we're all listening attentively. Mm -hmm. That was what I, yeah, I remember. Mm -hmm. And then when I didn't hear anything afterwards, I thought everything was fine. It never occurred to me that he would be dead. I mean, it never did, you see. So, um, and then I had to buckle down and finish my exams, and I did brilliantly well as well. I, I just had to get my loins and call on all my faculties and remember also my father's sense of courage and values and just not get overwhelmed mm -hmm. with it. Yes. Sir. Did your father's position ever in any way affect you when you were in school in terms of threats, in terms of, um, you know, certain privileges? Uh, how, how was it like? Because, I mean, the daughter of an army general, you're <laughs> talking about, you know, a, a very important target, if I can say. I suppose in those days, uh, Ghana was a bit more, I suppose, free. Yeah, people were more happy-go-lucky, mm -hmm. or so it seemed anyway. And... I was not made to feel special in any way. My yeah. father didn't like nonsense. He didn't like nonsense. So and he made sure that you understood that whatever you had was not a right, it was a privilege. Mm -hmm. you know? So I wasn't accorded anything. I was in the boarding house. So you know, there are rules. Was it easy for a guy to approach you and come to the house? <laughs> come talking about uh, it. Yeah, it wouldn't be with my dad. I think it would be more my personality <laughs> than anything else which might have scared them away. But mm. Tell me, away from your father being mm. a military officer, mm. yes. what do you remember him for as a father? Yeah. Loving, uh, loving, protective, um, the, 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 many, many things. A normal father. Yes, who was concerned for the well-being of his children and did his utmost to provide them with sound education and a good, stable family life, together with my mother. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. At any point in time, did you ever advise your father or speak to him, you know, because I'm very sure there were... The, the conversations on riots and instability was brewing. At any point in time, did you caution him? Did you speak to him as a worried daughter? You see, um, my father uh, was an infantry officer. Um, most of his professional life had been in the military, mm -hmm. which is what he loved doing. Mm -hmm. um, when he was called to government, uh, to join the Supreme Military Council too. I was at boarding school most of the time. time. Right. And then when one came home, he worked really late into the right. night. So you missed uh, yes. a bigger part. So, of course, now and again, one might have a conversation, but things in the country were not so fraught mm -hmm. that it would be a dinner table conversation. Mm -hmm. No, no. Well, that, but but your mother, yeah, right, your mother, mm. tell me how she raised you after that. How, how, I'm particular about how she, she, she's been able to raise you to be such a lady. Oh, thank like you that. very much. Um, it was very difficult. My mother was in her mid 40s when my father was murdered. And she, she was a um, mother and a homemaker, and she didn't work. And my father was the uh, sole breadwinner. It was not easy. How terrible was it? Beyond imagination. Instances? No food, no shelter, threats. Uh, we've been through all that. We've been through wow. all that. You see, because my father was given a military burial, or a state burial with four military honors, I think people think that everything was hunky-dory for us. But when he died, they went and looted the house, which was at uh, Bema Camp. They took everything. 
somebody even removed her slippers and wore my mother's uh, shoes and left her old slippers. They took was everything. This a, was this a burglary or was it, were you aware, were you home one day when they came? No, 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 no. I, we were at school. Mm -hmm. My mother was at home with my two brothers. Okay. One had come home on exit and the other one was very young in nursery, that sort of thing. And um, she was in communication with daddy um, when things started and she heard from him no more. And then it became, you know, there was a lot of shooting as I understand it, I wasn't there. So she had to uh, leave the house. So she left just with the clothes on her back. Hmm. I suppose thinking, no, oh, she'll be back later on in the day. And she never went back. When we went back a few months later, so I think once they heard that Daddy had been killed, you know, it was a free for all, and they just ransacked the house, looted it, took everything, took everything. My mother had a 120, uh, that's in 120Y. One of the soldiers took it. Cut it and you, yeah, oh well, it took her. Uh, it was was uh, your mother ever tortured? Like, yeah. no, fortunately, she was, she, was she left the house, so yeah. Mm -hmm. a, a woman's best friend, they say, is a dad, and there's yeah. a certain special <laughs> connection that you would have with your father, mm -hmm. you know. Um, in how, what, what kind of gap or void was you know, experience or felt by you when he passed or when you heard he had died? When that minute you heard that, you know. Did you even understand what death was at the time? In those days, people didn't die as much as they seem to <laughs> die now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. People Constitute. just didn't die. And when somebody died, they were like a great-grandfather or a great-grandmother. Yes. Yeah. But now you see or hear of your mates just dropping. Okay. And yeah, so death was alien mm -hmm. in a way yeah. to me. And my father was so dynamic and strong and vibrant and powerful that I just couldn't imagine him lying lifeless. Mm. So it, it, I can't explain to you how dreadful it was. And you get on with your life, you, you, you know, and you learn to live with it. Don't listen to these people who say to you, oh, it happened a long time ago, so right. No, 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 no. You will learn to live with it. And I was amazed, and I didn't realize mm -hmm. when you, until you said to me, oh, you sort yeah. of sat up when you heard his voice. And that's not the first time I've heard it, but I don't know what pushed me this morning. So, you know, it, it, it plays itself out in all sorts of ways and not obvious all the time. <laughs> We're going to be opening the phone lines right about now on 0246-807-983. 0246-807-983. So you can join in the conversation with us. You can share. Um, if you even lived during that time as well, we would love to hear um, from you, you know, celebrating our independence. And tell us about the Northeast region as well. It's very important. We want to hear the size, the sound, the culture, the lifestyle, the food. Everything about the Northeast region, call us and share with us as we're celebrating our heritage, our Ghana month. So I was going to ask this question just one second, but um, did, you, did you see his body? Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah. That okay. was very bad. Okay. Yeah, it was very bad. Um, you see, when Daddy was at the uh, police headquarters, uh, that was his command center. Mm -hmm and he was supported there by some recce officers. Mm -hmm. uh, somehow, I think, uh, the uh, bandits heard about him being there, so Air Force planes kept circling mm -hmm. around the building and trying to, you know, well, threatening to bomb. So he was very mindful of casualties, which he wanted to avoid. Mm -hmm. So he decided to leave the police headquarters and the uh, officers got said, no, sir, you stay and we'll protect you. But he, he just didn't want any casualties. So he left and went to Nima police station mm -hmm. with just his bodyguard and his aide-con, his ADC. Yeah, and they were his only protection. So when you hear stories of General Odach Wellington arriving, gang ho shooting left, it's just a, a you know, fallacy, yeah. it's not mm -hmm. true. 
So he goes into Nima Police Station and he's given the office of the uh, commander of the station. So he was sitting there with uh, the ADC and the bodyguard. And uh, I think the soldiers, I think, hunting for him. And they, and in fact, he went there in a police Mowag. So I think some civilians there saw these bandits and said, there's a general in there. Mm. So they came and started shooting indiscriminately. My father, I think, was at the window doing something, looking up, and he got hit. So when he fell down, uh, they, of course, came in, led by, um, it's very difficult for me to mention his name because I, I think he's subhuman. But just so everybody knows who he is, he was called John Newton Gachiko. And he went in with the rifle. And the ADC, uh, Captain Emmanuel Opopo, said to him, the general uh, has been hit. And in time honored military fashion, even if it's an enemy combatant, you give the person first aid. So he says, let's take him to the military hospital, the general. He wouldn't listen, and Gachiko stood over my father, and he just emptied uh, cartridges into him. Hold on right there. We've got Israel on the line. <gasps> Israel, good morning. Oh, I think oh, we lost Israel. We are so sorry for keeping you on the line for that long, but you can call us again on 246 Do also call us back. We still want to hear from you regarding the Northeast region, or if you have a few to share on our conversation. Wow, MFR. Hmm. Yeah, I cannot imagine uh, how the body would look, you know, with hmm. such indiscriminate ways. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, they kept the body for months, bickering over it. And right. then eventually, when we went to collect, well, they allowed us to collect it. I, we walked in because the family members, they went in and they said, don't come, it's terrible. And I said, he's our father, and we will go and see him, frankly. Did your mom go into? Oh, yes. Yeah, she, she had to be in there for him to be bathed in prison. She had to be in there. So, And I couldn't recognize him. Wow. I only recognize him by his fingers because I used to trim his fingernails oh. for him. <laughs> for some reason, that was my duty. <laughs> I, I used to do it. So when I, I could tell that those were his fingers, but as for the face, no. No. Wow. No. They just destroyed it. If you had some magic power, yeah. if you were giving some magic, what's that one thing? Okay, Israel is back. Let me pick. Hello, Israel. Yes, hello. Hi, hello. Yes, hello. Hi, good morning. Thank you for calling us this morning. Can you talk to us? Yes, yes, ma'am. Hello. Yes, hello. Hi, Israel. We can hear you. Can you please talk to us? Yes, yes, yes. Israel, we are... We, sadly, we don't... Sorry, we have to... Yes. Yeah, sadly. When you call, you shouldn't listen to us on your TV set. Listen to us through the mobile phone, please. Yeah, if you had some the, magic power, you know, <laughs> what's that one thing you would want to change about this whole situation? I would have loved to have seen my father walking through the door. Mm. Yeah. When you played. Now, watching the body... Yes. Dismembered or, you know, looking. Do you carry that image with you? No. And how have you grown no. or how did you take it out of your thoughts? I, I, one is not able to take it out, out of one's thoughts. Do you remember it? What you saw? Yes, but I prefer to remember my father in his olive greens and his shining boots with his staff. That is how to remember yes him. yes how many how long did it take for you to see the body after he had been shot at the at Nima police station the funeral I think was in August it was sometime in August because yeah he was killed in June, June. on 4th of June, June. and um, yeah they, would, they wouldn't let us have the body. We didn't even know where the body yeah. was. Now and again, somebody would come to my mother and say, oh, I went to the mortuary to look for a relative, and I saw your husband lying there, things like that. And then we might get a call and say, you can come for the body now. 
and we would go and then nothing would happen. And then eventually in August, uh, yeah, when uh, they decided to let us have it, we went and they started shouting at us when we were crying and told us to shush. And uh, they were very wicked. Yeah, wicked. The man who shot your husband, where is he? Not my husband. Sorry, your father. I beg your pardon. When he shot your father. Yeah, no, it's okay. You know, you had the memorial service yeah. and aunt, you know, with his photograph like that, because I'm older now than he was yes, when he died, yes. you see. She looked and she said to me, Your boyfriend. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I my 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 my, my thoughts are clouded. Um, apologies, but, yeah, but that's um, okay. Uh -huh. oh. Yes. Uh, gotcha <laughs> oh. uh, You really want to know where he yeah. is? Did, did, well, I mean... Did I, you ever meet him? No, but he was rewarded with a position yeah. on the AFRC. So that goes to show yeah. exactly I what mean, sort of people... Take power, so mm. they needed to take these people out. So they, they, didn't, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't need to do anything. <laughs> they, they thought they had to. They thought it was the best way. Now, 4th June mm. every year, what do you do personally? It's not an easy time. And when you look at the press, which I try to avoid on that day, you just get cross. Because uh, you, you see all sorts of inane comments. Right. Uh, yeah. So one generally avoids, uh, yeah. But last uh, 4th of June was different because it was 40 years. And I was determined to hold a memorial for my father because he seems to have been forgotten. His achievements are not celebrated. The National Reconciliation Commission uh, asked that he be awarded, you know, posthumously for gallantry and all that. And that, mm -hmm. and so last June, I had this memorial and I've, I've, after that, I uh, formed a coalition uh, to try to redress those uh, injustices which occurred and to ensure that the government of Ghana carries out the recommendation, the which is, uh, yes, uh, it's accepted and signed on to and released a white paper for, and nothing has happened. So, yeah. We're 60 years, finally, this year. What do you have to say amidst all of these that have happened? And the fact that your father and his voice still sounds like he's just talking a minute That's ago. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So audible, clear, calm, father for a soldier. So what do you have to say as you're celebrating independence amidst all the pain and everything that's happened? Ghana cannot continue to be selective in her recollection of her history. A lot has happened since 6th of March, 1957. I was quite disappointed to see a poster by a group celebrating independence, this year's celebration, somewhere in North America, I think. And none of the generals was on that poster. And that is wrong. The generals whether you like it or not, have contributed to the advancement of this country and more than people would ever know or imagine. In a short space of six, seven years, I could tell you so many things they did which have been swept under the carpet because it makes people feel better. Right. <sighs> the size at the same time. Yeah. We wish we had 60 more minutes to go on and, and, and talk heavily about this. But, of course, may he so rest in perfect peace. Thank and um, we know beyond that you're a happy woman because you know she, he is he's in a good place. Yes, point. yes. I would hope that wherever he's, he is, he would see me now and be proud of me mm -hmm. and know that all the values that he inculcated in me have made me the woman I am today. It has not been easy, but one has soldiered on, and I am happy with my life. I am happy with whom I am, and I am happy to call General Odati Wellington my father. You couldn't find a better father, the greatest Ghanaian general 
in our contemporary times. Thank you very On much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Tomorrow, we'll be talking to you uh, again. We'll be zeroing in at the Upper East mm -hmm. region if you're able to call for the As North well East as the tickets, we promise, but time is up. So tomorrow, we'll make that happen for you as well. My name is Jay Foley. My name is Amitha Kusiariti. Thank you, Madam Esther Adelta we'll, we'll keep up. We'll call maybe on the 4th of June to see what you're doing this year. That yeah. would be lovely. I yes. should look forward to <laughs> it. <All right. laughs> Enjoy your day. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Take control, gotta make